This is what the house from Family Guy looks like in 3D software. And before I show you the final realistic images, I'm gonna show you how it was made and some tips and tricks for making your own. To create it, I used Blender, which is 100% free, open source 3D software you can download on your computer. And if you haven't used it before, I got a beginner tutorial you might wanna watch up there. We start with the default cube, which I snap to the bottom, scale outwards, and then fly the camera inside of. Before sizing the room, I always add this scale model of a man, which helps me better understand the scale of things. Right away, we can see the ceiling is too low, so I set it to the more common ceiling height of 2.4 meters. Now we need stairs, which are easy enough to create from a resized plane. I add an array modifier and adjust the offset values to get the rise and run of each step. For the wall underneath the stairs, I added a plane and resized it to the rough shape of the stairs. Then I subdivided it to the number of steps minus one. Then I deleted all the vertices above the steps and got a perfect cutout of the stairs, which I just extruded out the edges to close the gaps. The stair banister here is too simple to model from, so I learned it's always better to model off a similar real world photo instead. One trick I've learned for modeling something like this is not to do the typical extrude and scale. Instead, you just model the narrowest and widest point, then select the edge, hit control B, and then importantly, scroll up to see the magic. This is much faster to model and it usually results in cleaner contours. Repeat this all the way up and you have something that looks complex, but only took about five minutes to model. Duplicate it, shrink it, another array system, handrail on top, and that's our stairs. Now for that iconic purple slash pink sofa. I've made a whole series on sofas before, but this one called for a different approach because while loose puffy cushions can be easily simulated, tight fabric cannot, which is exactly what this is foam cushions with tightly stretched fabric around it. And if you go looking for it, you'll notice it's a common problem. Even in AAA games, most sofas just look like rounded blocks with wrinkled textures. So I tried sculpting it, I tried Marvelous Designer, but nothing was able to solve the problem. So I tried something new. I grabbed cushions off my own sofa, put stickers all over them, captured hundreds of photographs from all angles, and then put it into the software Reality Capture which spits out a perfectly scanned replica. I duplicated them to make three sections and then saw there was too much repetition. So I then took the cushions into Substance Painter to bake the height map and convert different sections into brushes. I then used those brushes to break up the repetition while still keeping it realistic. And it actually worked which was a win for my scene, but this is not a very scalable solution. So if anyone has advice on achieving the same result using simulation or sculpting, do let me know. By comparison, the rest of the scene is easy. Simple hard surface modeling techniques that I've covered in older tutorials. But unless you're a student or you want to model these things as a learning exercise, then you should be downloading them off the web. Standard household objects like these are in surplus. So there's no point wasting hours when you can buy a better version of it for a few bucks. For example, at Polygon, we spend days modeling assets to strict production standards, and then we sell them for less than $3 each. Now you don't have to get them from us, but do get them from somewhere. If you do get them from us though, you can install the Polygon add-on, and then you don't even have to leave Blender. You can search, download, and import right from the sidebar. It also works for textures. You just click the object you want to apply material to, search, and download. And if the color isn't perfect, you just go to the node setup, find the color input, and either change the hue, saturation, or value, or you can drop in a color ramp node to completely change the colors to something else. And to make the materials more suitable for a house like the Griffins, I blended the textures with some surface imperfections, like water stains, smudges, and footprints. You can see a list of all the assets I used in the scene, plus the Photoscan sofa, which we're adding in the store, by clicking the link in the description below. And now for the asset that no artist likes making, windows and doors. So here are three tips that I've learned over the years to make it easy. The first is that when you're modeling your frame, add a mirror modifier with X, Y, and Z turned on so that you aren't wasting time. The second is that when you make a 90 degree turn, don't just rotate it and try to fix it by scaling because it's always gonna be slightly off. Instead, hit F3 and type in shear, or you can remember the hotkey, Control, Shift, Alt, S. 
then press Y for the Y axis and type in one or minus one depending on the direction. Then you have a perfect 45 degree cut that can be extruded out. And if you've got clipping turned on, you can just smoosh the edges till they touch. And three, to make the wall opening, add a cube and scale it to be just smaller than the frame. Then go to preferences, add-ons and enable the bool tools add-on. Now you can select your cube then shift select the wall and press control minus key. This will add a Boolean modifier, disable the cube from rendering and set it to wireframe mode. And if you see this, by the way, it's because you need a solidify modifier above the Boolean modifier. One bonus trick, you'll notice that if you try to make a second window by duplicating them, the Boolean no longer works. To fix this, move your cube to a new layer called Boolean and then select your wall and change the Boolean type from object to collection, then select that new collection. Now you can duplicate to create as many windows and doors as you want. And with that, the room layout is complete, which means now we can have some fun with lighting and composition. Like most 2D shows, the lighting on Family Guy is mostly flat, but we're not trying to match it, we are trying to transform it. So my process for lighting a scene like this is to first just play around with the lamps. You don't know what you don't know. So it's good just trying a whole bunch of unconventional ideas and seeing how it changes the forms and the shadows. We can make it look plausible later, but first and foremost, it needs to be interesting. So we always spend a solid chunk of time just experimenting. And I ended up with two setups that I really liked. A nighttime setting, which had warm practical interior lamps contrasting with cool exterior light, and a daylight setting, which was actually no lamps at all, just a sky texture in the world background input. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll also know that I tried to add characters, but then chickened out. I wanted to try Character Creator for the first time, which is paid software that lets you create customized characters that export to any 3D software package. And it's actually really decent. It's like using a character customization screen in a video game. But there is such a thing as the uncanny valley. And although the characters were very realistic, they weren't quite realistic enough. So even though they added a story and made the scene more interesting, everyone that I showed it to just said they looked weird. I probably could have improved it if I had more time. I decided to cut my losses and remove them. Wasn't a total waste though, as I was able to use character creator to make quick portraits of each character and then feature them on the living room wall. Yes, still goofy, but with the camera far enough away, doesn't really matter. So there it is, a realistic version of the Family Guy living room. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to help more people find it. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.